Welcome back to the Hot Diggity Dog Read to Your Dog at Home series. Speaking of which, I don't know if she's listening. Uh, today we're going to do two short chapters. Chapter 9. Literary Troll of Gimmage Sweet Shop of Rose Lane. Finn Gallagher, the newsboy, waved the London Times high above his head. On the front page was a photo of Humboldt and the Queen. It was the end of a long day, and Finn Gallagher's voice was hoarse. Time to close up the newsstand and go home. The papers were almost all sold out anyway. The street lights flickered as they came on. A shadow fell across the newsstand. Finn felt something pass behind him. As he turned to look, a cloaked figure crouched down, and reach with a bony hand for a newspaper. Hey, it's not for you know, it's tuppence of paper. But the wind snatched up Finn's voice. Again, he called out. But the figure was nowhere to be seen. It had vanished. Only a fishy smell lingered. Chapter 10. It was evening. The sky was a deep royal blue with a thumbprint of a moon. Humboldt was tidying the shop as it was nearly closing time when the frog nogger went ching ching. The door opened a crack and a long pointy boot poked through, followed by a large hulking woman dressed in grey robes. As she entered, she turned around, snapped the sign from open to closed and walked backward into the shop, her head flicking from side to side. Most peculiar, thought Humboldt. If only Mrs. Gimmich were here. The woman whirled around and leaning over the counter said in a raspy voice, You are the troll, I presume. Everything seemed to fly out of Humboldt's head, although Humboldt didn't really know what the word presume meant. He nodded. He was a troll, that much he knew. Mrs. Gimmage's very own troll, Humboldt nodded weakly. And Humboldt, isn't that what they call you? How could she know his name? In a trembly, wobbly voice, he said, Well, we're just closing, so if you'd like to place an order, it'll be most appreciated. At least that is what he meant to say, except it came out all upside down. If you would like to please an otter, it would be mossy graduated. The grey woman kept twitching her head to the side and peering behind her. She seemed to occupy the entire front room. All the time in the world, she whispered. Get me a box of peppermint chews, a tin of chocolate, almond, bark, twelve extra big licorice twizzles, and she hesitated. Anything else? Humble asked meekly. He just wanted to get her out of the shop as fast as he could. There is one more thing. The voice was a dry whisper. You'll have to come closer though. My voice is a bit weak. Every instinct told him not to get any nearer but he was trapped. Humboldt took a few steps closer. She leaned over him. He felt her breath sliding down the back of his neck. And 50 pounds of troll. With that, she grabbed him by the scruff of the neck and thrust him into her sack, dumping a handful of sleeping potion powder on him. And she yanked the top closed. My very own troll, she pronounced, as she hurried out of the shop into the dark street. The end of chapter 10. Things are getting a little bit scarier. I hope my listeners will be able to sleep tonight. So thanks for listening, and we'll see you next day for chapter 11. Cheerio.